Hey Saku, how are you doing? Hello. All good. It's a beautiful morning. A little bit tired because of the studios. I've been at the studio like, uh, I don't know, every day for a couple of months now with different kind of projects and different kind of music stuff, naturally. Uh, it's really pleasant and uh, I'm really grateful that I can do my living like this. But must say that it's starting to take its toll as well. It's like a long, long days and a little bit pressure building up like a Am I good enough or am I doing good enough or something like that? But nevertheless, all good. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of work and, uh, Much you know, work. <laughs> there is a stress and there is the positive stress. The stress, you know, we always think about the stress like something negative, but some stress is uh, always a bit uh, pushing uh, and it's that kind of positive also. Well, usually so. for me, it's like... Uh, like a let's say slight stress or something like that like a little bit of pressure it usually is a good thing for me it's more like a motivates it more like a, it more like a, gives me a reason to prove myself a little bit more like that oh maybe they adopt me well then i'm gonna show them that i'm definitely going to do this so usually for me it's like a positive stress but of course everything has its limits when it goes too long or too too long enough there's always always some negative side as well, but yeah. like you said, it's I don't think it's only negative thing, and I would like to always find something positive from the things as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good, a good thing. And then we always need to listen to our body, uh, because uh, when there is too mm -hmm. much, we have to to stop because we don't want to risk the burnout. That is something uh, I don't know for a musician uh, how. Because when we talk about general work, uh, it's a thing. But musician, you have a lot of pressure and you are touring, you are uh, working on new music all the time. So how do you cope with, uh, with uh, too much work? Uh, have, you ever have, have you ever felt like uh, getting close to burnout? Mm. Well, there was this one time when I think I was getting close to a burnout. It was like uh, when I having my first year with Turmi and Catalat, still doing, still doing my daily job, still doing some house DJ stuff, still doing Fear of Domination. Uh, everything like that is happening at the same time. And then I remember that it was like a one year that I did all those together. And uh, at the Christmas table, I remember when I was going home to my parents and I just like I passed out at the sofa, like I immediately started sleeping when I just sat down. And then my mom came and said, Saku, we need to change something. This is not going to work anymore. Like <laughs> you're exhausted all the time. But but still, I don't think it's more like uh, comparing like uh, musicians or normal people who work like on normal jobs. I think you can do the same thing with every kind of job or every kind of passion, more or less, because uh, in a way, I don't still think that I I have a job because when I had job, when I worked a lot, I wanted to make money. So I have money for the things I want to buy or want to do. But now I do the thing I want to do and some crazy people are paying me money for it. So in a way, this doesn't feel like a job anymore. It's more like a I don't know. I don't even know what to call it. It's more like a passion or something like that and uh, trying to keep it up. Yeah. But uh, that's the reason I don't think as a normal job because I've done quite a lot of those normal jobs back in the days. May I ask what kind of job you did before? Well, I started as a, as a truck driver for a company that uh, sold uh, building equipment. And everything like that, hardware store, in a way. And then I was uh, at the warehouse. Then I was uh, driving the truck. Then I was taking care of the shipments. Then I became the salesman in there. At the same time, I did uh, some local crew job for the for building a bigger stages for the big artist. I did some house DJ stuff. I did uh, dropping some snows from the roofs as a side job as well. Uh, what else? Did some helping work the schools. 
basically anything. Renovated a couple of uh, uh, friends' houses or friends' apartments. Basically everything I just can come up with <laughs> because yeah. life a, lo a lot of experience in different things. Yeah, but most of all, I think the as an artist, as a career, as an artist, I think the local crew girls were like the, like the best ones because you really had to put your hands in the dirt and uh, really saw what what means to build up on stage and what means to take the, take it down in a certain deadline. And then definitely we didn't count the hours like uh, there were no regulations or anything like that. So it was more like uh, we start and we stop when it's done. So it was like a 12 hour, 16 hour job shifts easily every yeah. time. I suppose every everybody in the music industry who is doing the crew work knows how it goes. And it's like, uh, I always appreciate those guys because I know what it takes. Yeah, yeah. It's not an easy job. But... No, and if they don't do, do their job, we can do ours. So. Yeah, it's a chain. Yeah. Yeah. And every, everyone has its own part and uh, everyone is important. So definitely. And I have never like uh, felt like, uh, yes, we are the band. We are somehow better or something like in there, because I always think it's more like uh, we are coming to the cruise house. We are coming to the venue's house. They are inviting us in there and it's, we are all, all the same in a way, like uh, for, for example, our own life crew. We are in the same family. We all all the bands or all the projects I work in, there is not like a just the crew and just the band divided. We are all in the same house doing together the work we need to be done. Everybody wants to uh, wants to have the same goal, so there there is no reason for, I don't know, chain of command or anything like a stupid like that. It's more yeah. like a, we we all do our share. Yeah, yeah. I wish that uh, everyone in uh, in the world will be like you thinking in this way because I have heard stories of uh, certain musicians, uh, singers or bands that uh, are not that kind with people working behind the scene. So if everyone will be more down on heart and uh, be grateful it will be better <laughs> but uh, yeah still like a, like you said like a, about the stress stress is not necessarily always a negative thing the same goes i think with uh, uh with the pride i think that is also a good motivating thing to be proud of what you have done what you have ac accomplished but still if you get the free feeling of pride by Putting someone else down, I don't think that's the right way to do it. In a way, in in any way, like uh, you can be proud of what you have achieved, but in the same time, you should understand that you have. I'm pretty sure you haven't done it alone. There has been the crew, there has been the family, there has been the band members, there has been everybody else helping you get in the place you are right now. Yeah, the support around. Yes, and the people who work for you. Mm, Even yeah. though we work for the same goal, like for example, for the crew, of course they understand that we as a band, we provide the situation where we all can work. So it's not like we are the bosses in the house, but still like, uh, well, we we pay the money. <laughs> yeah. So you know, yes, but still like, uh, there is no reason for me to start to think that I'm better crew, so I should teach them how to do their job. No, in no way. I I want to pay the money so they can afford the living, they can support their families, and they can do their job as well as they can to make sure that our shows are the best. Yeah. And, you know, uh, my parents always uh, uh, taught me that um, you have to treat others as you would like others to treat you. So... Mm -hmm. uh, also, when uh, before I moved to Finland in Italy, when I w was optician and uh, the clients came, I was I was always treating the clients as I, you know, if as if I was in uh, their shoes. So always uh, giving uh, uh, more more um, prices, for example, or 
trying to give the best service and to make feel them good because sometimes it's not easy in particular when it comes about when it's about money because not everyone has enough money and there are things that are expensive so <laughs> uh, i always thought to to give the people as many uh, uh, options so they can uh, they can choose not just giving the the higher price like the company wanted <laughs> I was may maybe maybe I'm not a business person. I'm not a at all a business person, but <laughs> I prefer to have people happy than uh, unhappy. <laughs> well, that's not necessarily a bad thing as a business wise as well, because with a happy customer you get some regulars who want to come again and again and again. Maybe not. Maybe the first stop or the first visit was, is not like a jackpot as a money but you will get them again because they're satisfied on the service. So that's more like a business policy after that. How do they want to be yeah. represented? Do they want to just to take as much as they can with the first, when they first meet the customer or do they want to make sure that the customer is satisfied? And nowadays I think uh, basically with every business, it's not necessarily anymore just the money. I think more or less it's getting more about the service, the how the service works. If there are some um, something bad happening, the quality of the product isn't enough. Can they get a refund? How the how the uh, company uh, like handles all those things as well. And think yeah. I think that's the place where we really measure which companies are good or bad. For example, offering the services is how they handle. Uh, those situations, those orders, which didn't go as planned. Yeah, yeah, true. But let's talk about the Turmion Catilot now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, I'm not going to ask too much about uh, the album, Omen, Omen X, mm -hmm. uh, because we talked last summer uh, before uh, your show at Porispere. So if someone wants to hear you talking about the album, can check out that interview. Um, but uh, I want to know, what's your favorite song from the album? I think it would be Isa Maiden or Gout Dancing. There are lots of good songs, but somehow those two stick out for me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you have been on tour a lot. <laughs> you are all the time on tour. <laughs> I was like uh, thinking, uh, when I can send a message to Saku to ask about this uh, metal pizza? And then I was looking, mm, let's see when it's a good time. But you had a lot of of dates. So I was like, uh, it feels like there is no time. And I was like, I don't want to 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 be inappropriate. But uh, yeah, at, now it was like the good good moment to ask. Um, you have now uh, a moment, just a moment uh, of relax, because no, then well, you are relax going relax or not. Like a, I have a moment to do. I have a, like a little moment without shows, so I have more time to be at the studio. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> kind but of yeah. relax, not not traveling. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you yeah, are. Uh... I, I think that's the most. Uh, most time consuming thing like being on the bus being on the tour like being in the truck or car or whatever you use like uh, all the time just traveling from A to B because sometimes and usually the uh, distances are quite long it's like a four five six hour drives and that's a lot of time that I just can't use for so many things as naturally as I could do in the studio at the home so it's not just the having the show, it's also the traveling. So usually like even the one show, it takes like a two working days from me. And uh, I'm just, and to be clear, I don't complain in any way, but there are still like deadlines going on. So you really have to start to manage your time and days, how to work them. So last, last Saturday, we had our last spring show at the, uh, at the Rama Domino. And uh, even though I love shows, I'm... I'm quite happy that we have like a couple of weeks without without shows, so I can really like catch up with all the things that have been lacking. Yeah. 
Yeah. And maybe then have like one week of a relaxation or whatever that is. And after that, we had to Japan for two shows yeah. and be with him yeah. there. So how do you feel about those uh, shows that are coming, the, the one in Japan? The two shows in Japan? Uh, well, first of all, the whole going to Japan is one of my bucket list, bucket list things. Like I've been always wanting to go there, like dreaming to go to Japan. And uh, even more to have the opportunity to play two shows in there. That's like uh, really like a dream come true. But even though I'm really waiting for the shows, I'm like uh, so happy that we are going there. I'm really, really happy. But somehow it hasn't like struck yet that we are going in there. I don't know why. Maybe it's, I'm not usually that kind of person who like a hype so much before the happening. I'm more like a, when I step on the on the plane, I'm pretty sure I like, a, oh yes. Now we're going. Maybe it's like some kind of pessimistic inside me. That I'm always like a. I've always ruled out some kind of option or some kind of outcome that something bad happens and it won't happen. So I'm like always prepared and planned for everything that might happen in a way. Yeah. But I yeah. think that side of me also also kills the hype in a way. Like I'm not so like a hyping before it really happens. Yeah. Yeah. But still, yes, I love, I want to go there. I'm being waiting. I think that's going to be one of the highlights of my, I don't know, life, maybe even. And even though, uh, and even the Beast Black is coming in there, coming in there so the, the good friends are coming. I think we are going to have lots of fun in there. Yeah. Do you have also time to visit the city? We have like a three days of our own, plus the tra traveling days, so... Not much, but still like uh, something we can see a little bit about the Tokyo. Yeah. So do you have any plans on uh, what to do or what to do? I want to do karaoke. Okay. <laughs> I want to do that. And uh, usually when I go to the new cities, new countries, I just want to see how like the normal guys, normal people living there. So most likely I'm going to hike around the city, travel around the city, just see how it goes taste food i hope like lots of food i want to taste food like a, and most of all i would like to see like a some place where i see lots of the locals are going i would like to go in there and taste something because you see it usually then you get the taste of the well the country you are in for example like a, uh when you go in rome there are lots of uh tourist places and of course they have all the mm, not so sure traditional Italian food, but like uh, all the restaurant versions that you can taste any love in the food in a way. It's like a big, big restaurant doing the food, most likely good food. Yeah, but still, but when you go even inside the room, when you go, for example, to the Trastevere, the section in there, I love that section, even though it's still like a pack with tourists a lot, but still there is a totally different vibe in there. And in somehow, somehow even the food tastes better in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, my cousin was uh, studying in uh, Rome. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he knows well that uh, in the tourist places, uh, you know, in, the, in, the, in those areas where there are full of tourists, the restaurants are not good. They they are uh, overpriced and the quality is not that good. But when you, you need just to walk... A kilometer away yes and then, and then you get the real food that every everyone in the city enjoy so um people should be aware always about tourist place uh, and uh, also try to find the what uh, the people from the place are eating where they are eating and what's what's the best uh, yeah because the, there are so many tourist traps <laughs> And of course, if you enjoy those, they are easy. Most likely there will be people who will speak English or your language. Uh, they are prepared for that. As a, cust uh, as a customer, it's an easy place to go. If you go to the one kilometer away, there might be like, uh, you have to be prepared to talk Italian in a way, <laughs> or at least try, or what, wherever country you are. Yeah. Of course, there's can, that kind of tra uh, problem, problems could be in there, but... I always take those as a, as a challenge and uh, well, I've been quite a lot around Europe at least. So never I have left the 
restaurant hungry. So always there had been some kind of <laughs> solution. Yeah. Uh, so far, what was the the best place that you have been on tour with the with Tour Mion Catilot and uh, uh, talking about um, the city or about the show itself or about the fans? Uh, what's mm -hmm. something that uh, it's like the the best? Mm, I need to check the place. I think it was an was it Hungary? Let's see. Where is this place? Yes, Budapest. Yeah. There was this place called uh was it like a Barba Nigra or something like that? Yep. And that was like a really well, it was really fierce, and we haven't been in the Hungary in Budapest before that. And the house was packed. It was like a really fierce show, lots of good vibes, good place to play. And it was really like a surprise for us because we didn't know what to expect. And we also had a little bit of time before and after the show, so we had time to stroll around the city as well. And it was a really beautiful place. I've always loved, for example, Prague because the medieval vibes and um, always like a river crossing the city, it usually makes the city more lovely and you can take like a boat and see lots of the city from there. We have castles and uh, medieval style, like a Gothic style churches. Those are the things I love. But uh, uh, Budapest was something like that as well. So I really like love the place. I've heard that it's like the... It's like the bathhouse of the Europe, so they are the best hot tub, hot tubs and stuff like that are in there. But didn't have the time to test those. If we if we even ended up in a, some like a, I don't know like a university party in a club. Okay. <laughs> and that was like <laughs> we were in there like uh, we saw that everybody around us was like a uh, hardly twenty or something like that. But still they let us in and well they like whoa this is. Quite a while it was like a like three three floor club. So mm -hmm. it was like a party everywhere around us and that <laughs> sounds cool. Was yeah. A, that was a fun place to be. Yeah, yeah. I have never been but, to Budapest, but maybe one day. You should. And of course there are like a lot of cities, good memories, like from every country we have been. But like uh for some reason Budapest pops out because of uh Maybe it's because we didn't have any expect any expect expectations. Whoa, yeah. what was for it, and it really like surprised us in a really really good manner. Yeah, and talking about the music video because Turmi on Kati that music videos are uh, all amazing, <laughs> and uh, hey. I really love them. But do you have a favorite one? No, I don't think I have like a favorite one, one because all of them are like, uh, it's not just the video, it's about seeing uh, the song meeting the video, the video meeting the song, however you want to put it. For example, I love the Isa Maiden thing that I write the lyrics, I did the singing parts and uh, didn't have a word with Rauli who directed the video. And then I just saw what Rauli did and I was like uh, even getting emotional how beautiful video he made it for the, for the song. Even though we didn't talk about talk a thing about it it was like so beautiful to see how the song connects like uh, and he could do his version of the story in a way but I would still say a lot about every video what, which we have like a Dance Panic for example I love the uh, the theme like a video game theme in that like a Tekken theme in the video yeah. A mortal combat theme, how you want to put it, and still there is like this goofing around in Turmi and Catalot style. Naito. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is definitely something. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, everything like that. It's just, I just, I, I love how the, all the videos more or less have met the song really well. And uh, when they are like crazy enough, there is always something good to remember from them. Yeah. So I, I don't think I can pinpoint you one that is 
like a D D one for me. It's more like the song and the a song and the video meeting up and for that from that perspective, I would say like a dance panico maybe. Night to all, I mean, the videos are one of the best videos we have. Yeah, yeah. I I really love Dance Panic. I think that I watched that video, I don't know how many times, because it's always, it's it became a classic for me. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, it's something that I enjoy to watch. Is, there is uh, this fun part, and yeah, it's... And I also love how they have, like, a hidden the band members in the video, just... Not like having like lead role in the video, but just like dancing with the, all the others and just like flashing in the video at some part. That's also also like a yeah, it's a, genius. A <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think well, for example, for our band, I have like asked that I think we should be more in our videos, not just like singing or playing. Everybody does that, but more like a being a part in the video in a way, not like a lead role maybe, but just like a. Oh, 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 did you see that was the guy over there? Because we have the characters in the band, so why not use them in the video as well? Yeah. Maybe not take it as long, like, for example, for uh, Rammstein or something like that, which always have the band members in the video and really, like, uh, acting in the video. And those, those are amazing, like, uh, role plays that they do in the video. I don't think we, we don't have we don't have that kind of talent yet, so maybe just like you use side side uh, side characters for us, but still, it's always have uh, funny and good to have like Easter eggs in the video, and yeah. just like if you know you know. Yeah, true. Uh, you mentioned that you are now working uh, in the studios, so what? Is about Turmion Katilot, is about fear of domination, is about stereo terror. So what's what's it's about going about everything on? basically? Everything, uh, okay. Turmion Katilot never stops. We are constantly making music. We don't plan like a we are not planning like a let's make an album. We just do music and when the time comes for the for the album, then we have like lots of music all the time in the warehouse in a way, like in stuff. Yeah. Uh, for Fear of Domination, we are making the new album finally. We found some good crew for the album and we can finally make it happen. And we are, I don't know when this is released, but uh, new singles are coming pretty soon. Uh, for Stereo Terror, we are making, we just released one single with Tenora, Lohima from The Battle yeah. Beast, and uh, we are doing another summer song right now. I hope everything will go well and we will get it out for the summer as like planned we don't have lot, lots of work anymore in that and Lauri Hamelan and producer have done, has done like amazing job in there then I've then I have had like a couple of uh just like one-time projects like helping out something or doing some singing thing or I have learned one cover song gig at the uh, next week at Helsinki and uh then I have this new project building up with a couple of friends like uh, I don't know something ambient goth we have been like doing that for a while it was more like uh let's do some own music not like a thinking anything like a metal or anything like the bands we have and it has it was first like a more like a therapy or like a relaxation just testing out stuff but it has suddenly built up quite well and we have even mixed one of the songs and uh, playing it around the scene or however you want to call it, like a the people in the industry and have had like uh, quite good expressions from it. So now even one manager told us that we should release it. So it seems that I'm going to have like one more project. Okay, <laughs> nice to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I can wait to hear what uh, what you work on. Um, Maybe but... I should play the song for you after the interview. So you can oh, tell it me will be nice. feelings about it. Yeah. And talking about fear of domination, uh, mm -hmm. last album was in uh, 2021. 20. 2021. Yeah, 21 or yeah. 22. Can't remember. The corona was like a blurry time for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think for everyone. <laughs> but uh, um, now we are work working on a new album. So do you have any idea when more or less it should be released? I think we are talking about... Uh, Year, yearly of the 2025 or something like January okay. 
2025. But most likely, I can't promise anything yet. It's about the label, it's about the band, but I think, uh, well, the songs are getting ready quite well, but I think we want to release quite a bunch of singles and like uh, build up the hype again because of there have been like a couple of, maybe a little bit, not, not maybe a little bit too big pause, but like uh, we had this little breathing pause and building up the songs and checking up the, who will mix it, who will master it, who will produce it. Stuff like that. And finally, it seems that we are really to, really ready to punch out something new from us. Yeah. So it has taken its time, but I th really think it's worth it. And we don't want to rush rush the album out because of that. Yeah, yeah. And then the, what's the situation with the drummer? Do you have a drummer now? Uh, in fear of or... domination. Yes, we have, have Anton playing for the couple of shows already. Uh, and there are a couple of others who would like to join the ranks of Fear of Domination as well, but we haven't really decided yet. But, uh, well, let's see. I'm pretty sure we have some news for that as well quite soon because okay. naturally we need a drummer because of the sad situation with Miki. It's uh, really frustrating to see something like that happen. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, about shows, you are playing uh, in Numirok? But there is mm -hmm. any other show coming during the summer? No, we are holding those up because uh, when the album comes, we want to do as much shows as we can. So usually when you play at some festival, you are, next year, most likely you won't be playing in there. So we are sh saving all the shots for the next summer, the 2025 summer and the whole year of 2025. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Numerok, as us. Should we come? Do we want to come? So we told them that we are, yeah, Numerok is a Numerok, so we can do the only festival show we do this year at Numerok. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be, it's going to be a blast. So maybe we have something new for the Numerok as well. Let's see. Nice. Also, I remember you did the cover of The Bad Touch in 2017. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, how was the reaction from from your fans when the bad touch came out? Well, I think most most of all the people took it quite well. Like it was funny thing from us because we are not so like uh, our songs are not like uh, for example like a Turmian cattle goofing around so much, or at least so people say. I don't know. We are having fun at the stage show. <laughs> don't don't really know, but. Uh, it was just like a fun thing. It was like a summer song for us as well. And uh, we all have been listening to the Blood Hub Gang naturally for quite a while. So so we were thinking that like back in the days, we were thinking like, let's do something fun together. Which song it would be? And we came up with the idea with that bad touch. And uh, well, it seems that people really enjoy it. Like uh, it's yeah, fun. To yeah. You know, it's a big classic and... Uh... You did a great version of it, so of course people enjoy enjoying are enjoying still enjoying it. So yeah, I think it was a good idea. Yeah. So now let's go to the questions or what people wrote on Instagram. So the first one is uh, Bear the Wise Man, uh, and the the. It's not really a question, or is it? I want to know where he gets his energy because that guy plays an obscene number of show most years. <laughs> well, I don't think it's like a, there's like one word or one answer for that, but maybe the one thing is like, a, not like maybe one, one of the main things is like, a, if I learn something in my life is I enjoy... Mm, Every kind of, uh, I enjoy the show business. I enjoy making of music. I enjoy sharing the music, but as well, I enjoy doing the escape rooms for for example, which I do nowadays as well. Like uh, everything that gives people a little bit joy, a little bit more reasons to look forward to tomorrow or anything like that. I don't know exactly why but somehow i feel like a really comfortable in there i feel like that's the place where where i should be and what should i do and uh i think i'm 
I don't know. I'm pretty good at it as well. At least I feel like I, when I do something, I like I have success in it. Of course, it would be <laughs> stupid to do things which constantly hit you in the face, like you suck, man. But uh, I think that's the one of the main things. It's just like having this, not like a, me having the energy. It's more like a me being in a place where it's a good energy, good vibe. We are doing things for people to have a good good vibes in their lives. We are doing this music to, for ourselves, of course, but as also for the audience out there. And I think that's the one of the main things giving me energy. Of still, yeah, Saku has been quite tired sometimes as well. <laughs> okay, it seems that I'm not invincible. Even though I have this saying that I'm pretty sure I'm I'm immortal I'm immortal I'm not gonna die, and if the time comes that you can prove me wrong, I'm pretty sure I'm not here listening listening to that anymore. So in the meantime, I just believe I'm in, I'm immortal. Yeah, <laughs> good good answer. Then there is a uh, Dewis Wultnen that. Ask, uh, what Turmion Katilot songs would he like to perform in the future that he hasn't performed before? Mm, well, I've done quite a lot. Maybe something from the really old age, like from Hoytobir, like a Rautaketju or something like that. I'm not sure have you ever played that. And also there are lots of songs from the Tense Panic, which we played like uh, one tour, but after that, not so many times. For us, it's like no problem to take him back. We usually like have training sessions between the tours, like always like uh, discussing which songs we should we take back, back like on the roll. We don't like uh, do one set and play that at, at every show on the tour. We have like, uh, let's say if our, shows like a 15 or 18 uh, songs we have most likely trained like uh, 25 songs 13 songs and we pick songs from th that pool but sometimes even during in the middle of the tour we might be like hey let's play this song and we take some excellent time with the soundtrack and train one or two more songs if we want so i'm not really sure there are some songs we haven't played ever but like maybe Rauta Get You or Hanska would be like would be lovely to play. Like uh, more from the old ages. Yeah, yeah. Then there is uh, a Kut that asks uh, something that uh, you answered before, but I'm going to read. What news from the camp Fear of Domination? Why not any summer festival with a f Fear of Domination? But you, you gave the answer before, so... And we have the numero coming, so ha ha ha, jokes on you. <laughs> then there is a uh, Makinen Seitzeman Seitzeman Kolmekaks. <laughs> is he a. Uh... Wait, I have to, <laughs> to read. Dengnara Danganron Pa Fen. Am I reading right? It's a ga I know that it's a Japanese uh, game. Yeah. Video game. It's da dangan rompa. What what does it mean? It's a it's the name of a video games, a Japanese video games. Well, I haven't played that. <laughs> so well, maybe I've... you have to. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that yeah, I should start playing that. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, uh, you know, checking what's what's this, and then oh, okay, it's a video game. <laughs> Are you a video game person? Yes, definitely. Like Are you more a computer like or a console? With everything. Everything. Yep, I've been like gaming since I was since I was a child, and uh, with consoles, with computer, with everything. Being so uh, like a uh, one of the good things for me is like I like to dwell into worlds, like uh, movies or books or games. And especially games which have like a really strong storyline. If you like play that and you can really like dwell inside the game, just forget and lose everything else around you. Those are the best kind of games for me. Like a really be something else for a, for a 
little a bit, little bit longer time. Like for example, when the Cyberpunk 2077 came out, it was like one of the best games for a long time because it, the whole world was so massive, so huge, and you could really just like uh, you could really simply take the bike and just drive around the city and enjoy the view and enjoy the storyline, which was really, really well written. Yeah. yeah. And also those games when you can like uh, choose different kind of options which will alter the outcome of the game. Those are always the like uh, one of my favorites. Yeah. Because you need to do the, the right choice to to get where you want with the with your um with your character there in the game. Yeah, but there's still like uh, for example, like in Cyberpunk, there wasn't like a necessarily right answers. It was more like uh, all those moral questions were so like a uh, really delicious like a moral question should we do that, and maybe then she or he will die, but they might live, or should we do that and maybe they will die and she or he will live, or should I be like just like an asshole and take these to myself, just to help, just to make sure that I can do another job, more better. Yeah. Yeah. There were like uh, lots of different like uh, hidden meanings and questions inside the game, hidden throughout the time, like uh, questions about suicide or what is right or right is wrong or everything like that, like really deep meanings hidden in the game, which were really, really good. Yeah. What do you think about uh, um, those uh, the, lately in the la last years, I think more, uh, they are doing series from games what do you think about those? Do you like to watch them? Do do you ever watch any? And uh, well, were they example, good or no, not? Well, for example, the latest the Fallout series came out. Yeah. Like a big fan of Fallout, so that was a good series. It has the dark humor aspect. Yeah. Did like you watch the, the Wall? Yeah, sure. Hey, I'm I'm a bit uh, late. I'm watching step by step, but yeah. Ooh, ooh, okay. Well, I have to. Be careful so I don't get any <laughs> Don't but, yeah, spoil series, too much. <laughs> but the series was really good. Of course, you can always think maybe there were a thing or two you would have done differently. But hey, I'm not making series. I'm making music. So maybe that's not my job. I enjoyed the whole series. And I I enjoyed how uh, how it really like uh, appreciated the original game. How like uh, it, it was full of Easter eggs. It was full of Stuff like a people who just have played Fallout will know this. And, oh, oh, you see that? Oh, sh check that. And they're like full of those kind of things. Uh, some would say it was too humorous. They would like to see a more darker version of it. But if you play the game, the Fallout, it is dark in some places, but still it's full of like a Bethesda that style of a dark humor yeah. and all the. American dream 50s still sticking out in there. And for example, that series was really, really good. Uh, which else should be the thought? Uh, well, with the Last of Us series. I I love it. It was like a so beautiful done. And I loved how they made some changes when comparing to the game, but still it had its own storyline and it was as depressing as the game. So <laughs> that was the best thing. Uh, or for example, have you seen the show? Yeah, the Last of Us series. Yeah. Yes. For example, the one episode when they have there's uh two gay men, the whole episode about the two gay men that was maybe one of the beautifulest episodes in the whole like a uh, series. So they had like this one spin off episode during the whole whole series. It was like uh, it was so re well done and so dark and so depressing all the time yeah. and all the well for example in the beginning of the death of the child of the the main character's child it was like a, it was as devastating as it was in the game as well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah okay but let's talk about the metal music now and uh, how uh, yeah. how did you get into metal music mm, well when talking about bands, it was bands like uh, Rob Zombie, The Covenant, Rammstein, something like that. When I was like uh, 
I don't know, 13, 14, something like that. Also Lordi, you remember the yeah. that band. The, their Get Heavy album came out during that time. So that was one of the like, would you love a monster man? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is good. Because I think Lordi had the first impression for me, like uh, metal music doesn't have to be so like, uh, mm, it doesn't have to be so evil or so like something. There they can be like a little green in, on your on your face and still you can do like uh, heavy music. Yeah. Which I really loved. Uh, same goes with Rob Zombie as well. And uh, when I was a youngster, most of the kids who ended up with metal music had like bands like uh, Children of Boodoo. And of course, I listened to that as well. All the appreciation as well goes in that camp. But I always wanted to find something that a li little bit like a break the manner. There was like a Children of Boodoo, there was like Norther, there were lots of bands, the Finnish melodic death metal scene popped up. But uh, there were good things in there, sure, but I always wanted to some find like a bands, metal bands, which like really break the rules in a way. Yeah. Uh, for that, I love to find like Rob Zombie doing whatever he wants, Korn doing whatever they want. And Isn't like music those. something that you should be uh, up to do whatever you want? Uh, you know, I know there is a lot of uh, those... Uh, purist in in the metal scene mm. that say that the metal is this 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 everything else is not if a band uh, switch to another direction they are like no this band is not good anymore and uh, for me I'm, a musician is an artist so art there is not rule in art mm -hmm. you you should do whatever you like I'm not saying like, uh, for example, the bands back in the day, it's like a British melody death metal scene. I'm pretty sure they did what they wanted, but still, at least to my liking, they started to sound a little bit more and more like each other in a way. There were, there were really like good songs in there, but still like, a, I would like to sound more like a variety with the songs. So bands like Rob Zombie, Payne, Rammstein, The Covenant, even Cradle Filth, something like that like a, the, the, there i could find something a little bit more different yeah a little bit more not maybe extreme but more like uh pushing the limit in some way yeah with something that someone else hasn't done necessarily in a way and uh also of course one thing i noticed like later on was that all those bands do their music like a little bit like, like a little green on their face like a they have the dark humor or the dark something in there, sure, but still like a, in a little bit they are still like a more like an entertainers as well, and that's was was the aspect I really enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, uh, when I go to take photos during the the gigs, um, mm. I always love when there is that um, crazy energy when something happened on the stage with. Tormion Catilot, all the time something happens, so the photos mm -hmm. are always nice after all. So I enjoy to take photo of uh, of when you play on the on the stage because the face is the what what you all are doing on the stage. So it's uh, it's something that uh, that makes more more fun taking photos. And, uh, and there are bands that are uh, technically very, very good, uh, but then uh, on the stage they are on the spot. They are nothing is happening, so it's a bit uh, killing the the show for me. And of course, there are different kind of people who enjoy different kind of things. There are like no right or wrong answers. If the yeah. band wants to be like uh, looking grim and uh, having this. Uh, not lot like uh, playing around the stage. They want to be like uh, stoic and uh, something like that more and head banging and being really skillful with uh, guitars on the whole scene, however you want to do it. That's not the wrong way. That's the right way as, as, as well as any other. It's more like uh, what the band wants and sticking to that. 
For yeah. example, field of domination, we always have like uh, energy on our shows and that's not because we planned it. It's more like the people who are playing it just enjoy it. And yeah. uh, and we, you are uh, want... and you are yourself on the stage. So yes, and it comes naturally. Yeah, and that's the way it should be done. Of course, it's good thing uh, when I was well. For example, I, today I headed to school to have a lecture for the youngsters in, at their band classes, like how to start a band, which are the first steps for the band. It's always good good idea to think like how we want to be seen. How what do we represent on the stage? Those are also good questions. And of course, uh, when going on the shows, it's more like uh, people listen with their eyes. So usually just guys just playing music, nothing else in a bigger scene. It usually needs something or you have to be like a really something spectacular with something as well whatever but still like uh it's good good moment a good time to have a little moment of thinking like how we want to represent ourselves yeah and uh, usually the best way is just to be you and uh, somehow try to match if there is like a band of five members something try to match all the five energies in the same time and find some kind of combination from those because also if there are just like a five persons doing whatever the five person are doing but they don't match each with each other that's also so and uh well, the vibe doesn't go on because of that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, do you remember what was the first gig that you attend? It was during my... I was, what, I was 15, 16, something like that. We had the schools, we had uh, these band projects and uh, like uh, musical projects and stuff like that. I love theater, I love like stuff like those. And uh, I think it was, I think it was Talulah. Yeah, I think I was singing that. I was maybe 14 or something like that. Okay. Like another Arctic at Talulah. I think it might have been that at our school hall with the band. And then I was, yeah, it was Talulah because after that I played the, Karen, yeah, Karen came after that, yeah. Okay. Talula was the first song I played in yeah. front of audience, like uh, with the real band. Yeah. Fun fact that is that has nothing to do with you, <laughs> but uh, last uh, Friday uh, after work with uh, the all the workmates, we had the Eurovision Dem party, but yeah. then uh, after uh, after a while it went everything but Eurovision. <laughs> so every the, the workmate was singing Rammstein. Then I'm not a good singer at all. I'm maybe the worst singer in the world. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I decide to to sing Talula <laughs> because it's uh, one of those songs that I know all the words. <laughs> but I think it was terrible. I'm not sure. <laughs> but... I want to hear it. Next time you're singing it, I want to hear it. Yeah, next next time I will take a video and uh, well, I also with a workmate. I think there is a video of me singing in a duet with uh, my workmate. He's singing uh, all in Swoma line and and I'm singing a Italian <laughs> at the same time. Also, at some point I start. I was with my phone reading the because I don't remember all all the all the lyrics. So at some point at the end I was watching the the Finnish lyrics and then i got confused and my brain just was not working anymore <laughs> but yeah that was a a story a story that so i will give you a sneak peek about the new project i've been working on and you will show me the video of you singing it it's a yeah video. i will ask to the workmates to send the video so then then i will <laughs> send you <laughs> and you will cry because it's a, it's terrible but yeah i will cry tears of joy yeah, <laughs> but now it's time for the jar, jar of uh, random topics. And uh, let's see what we are going to talk about. Uh, we got horoscope. Um, so what what is your opinion on uh, horoscope? Do you do you believe in it or uh, it's uh, bullshit? Uh, what do you think? Uh, like a horoscopes and uh, astrology itself. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> like anything, 
Uh, it's not like a, just like a simple answer, but as the horoscope itself, just the horoscope. Uh, I think it's more like a writing words that can be like a read in a way you want to be, you want to read them or you want the, you can hear them in the way you want to hear them. But when we go a little bit deeper about the astrology and the stars and stuff like that, that's more like an interesting section for me. I not maybe like a, thinking of the whole th like uh, stars over there are meaningful in some way but uh, there was a reason why all the ancient civilizations were so interested about the stars and the formations they make and the numbers they make and uh, I still think that people haven't cracked that yet why or how like uh, even the ancient civilizations could count and mathematically do so straight lines with the buildings with the stars back in the day so there were like a lot of that kind of questions and those are interesting to me like uh, about the astrology but not necessarily the horoscope i don't yeah. that's like a it's like a some mumble and jumble and uh figuring out that yeah i'm like a i'm liberal as fuck like a yeah what does that mean well i have this kind of a personality no that doesn't have anything to do with the libro it's more like a you know just like a believing that so it fits your agenda and that how that's how it like uh, strengthens the whole thing but like with the most things in this world if it gives you joy i am not the one to deny it from yeah. you everything that gives you something little even a little spark of joy in your life i always say go for it enjoy it it's yeah. like uh, we have enough depression in our world already. So if there is something that gives you some some kind of joy, let it be the horoscope. So yeah, everything. you know, uh, I think that uh, also people like to always read the, only the good things about the, you know, if you if you are uh, I don't know, I take a lion or a Gemini or whatever, uh, you like to read just the what they write about the good things. And uh, yeah, we are just people, and uh, we are not all the same. And uh, we, no one is perfect because perfect doesn't exist. <laughs> yes, and also it's the way they have been written that, in a way, they are like a genius way of writing those, because it's like uh, it's always written so that there is always like a sentence claiming something, but there is always a sub sentence that might like disapprove the whole first meaning of yeah. the sentence. Yeah. So you can always like a pick the one you like because they're they are not necessarily saying anything like a real in the whole descrip yeah. description like a how Libras or how Virgos or how Lions are working right now. There's always like it's like a, it's geniusly written. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. It's it, uh, it's, true. it's always it's, in the it's, it's in interesting the uh, to 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 think how they they came up with those things and uh, how they are writing that down so yeah and uh like like i said like when going to the ancient mythology and uh more like uh astrology itself i think that's interesting and i want to figure that more out but like uh, nowadays when we use all the tabloid medias and stuff like that it's like a, it's just like a, it's just trash <laughs> like let's be honest it's not like a it's like like a, you are enjoying orange colors tonight because you are so weird go as fuck. Like a, no, no, I don't. No, that's not how it works. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, but like I said, if you enjoy it, enjoy them. But uh, for me personally, I would like to go to the deeper meanings in astrology than just reading out some lame sentences. How I am something or I am not something. Yeah. Yeah. True. But let's get another one and let's see what is the second. I feel this one feels good. It's travels. Uh, so you are traveling all the time. And um, there is a place in the world that uh, you you dream to travel that you have never been. Well, Japan, but we have, we'll, we'll go there. So not, not, let's not use that. There's also Iceland. I would love to go there. Uh, and uh, hmm, Cuba is one of the places I would love to see, but 
many people say that Cuba isn't anymore that dystopian dream they had like uh, with the cars from the 50s it has because the blockade has been lifted and stuff like that it, it's not like Cuba anymore it was so I I fear that I have missed that boat already mm. well all the Thailand and Singapore and stuff like that like uh, that side of Asia would be lovely to see and well it's always like a when talking about the Middle East, I'm there is this little kind of like a problem that I can't really like uh, uh say that I really can agree with different kind of things with uh, like a human rights and stuff like that they have in the culture, but still there is like uh when talking about for example Middle Ages and the uh, Middle East back in the days it was the pinnacle of human humanity in there they. They research and develop basically everything from the modern medicine to the mathematical solutions. And there is some kind of a cultural aspect that I would love to see, but I fear I fear it's not this is not the time. Maybe sometime when the world has cooled down a bit and you could really go there and enjoy the cultural side of the country. Yeah. Maybe then. Yeah, I think that every every country has its uh beauty with uh, the culture with the food with a mm -hmm. lot of things uh, when it comes to travel i i i'm more on a i i like more the nordic part so if it's too hot it's not for me i'm i'm not a summer person living in finland i start to and uh, kind of enjoy also the summer but still i'm a winter person so I I'm more into seeing snow and uh, and th those things. So there are a lot of countries that I I still have to visit, but maybe one day. <laughs> Most of all, I would love to see different cultures, like a something like a totally different from us. Because when you travel around, for example, Europe, of course, different countries, different people, different language, different something. But still, I would say, like, at the end of the day, we are not so different at all. We have some different manners and different, for example, Italian comparing to Finnish. Sure, we have different kind of values or different kind of a mentality. But still, as a Western European citizen, we are quite the same. Yeah. So I would love to see, like, really something different. How, Like, for example, Japan, the whole culture is so different in there. Uh, before all this Ukraine Russia war, I have traveled in Ru Russia a couple of times. I love the dignity they have. I love the food in there. I love how they were like really friendly people. They had this really pride of their cultural heritage, but still like uh, there was not any kind of feeling of what's happening right now. And I fear those were the last times I will go to the Russia, but still I enjoyed the scene, the different kind of culture, even that close to Finland. Uh, I would love to go to the, like I said, to the Asia. I would also love to go to the Africa, for example, uh, Lahio Botox. They had this crazy show at <laughs> at Africa a couple of months ago or something like that. And it was like a, so cool to see the documentary about it. Yeah. I would love to see that, like a, how the people live in there. It's so different. Yeah, yeah. That sure. There's like some things that we take for granted are not necessarily so granted anymore. And uh, I don't say that I want to see the misery in there. I would just like to see how the people live in there, what they eat, what they do in free time, how they how do they express joy, how do they express their sadness, everything like that. That's really intriguing for me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But now let's talk about the most important thing in the world. The and pizza. it's pizza yeah yes so do you like pizza mm -hmm. love it good what's your won't favorite be a time pizza like sorry what's your favorite pizza usually it comes with something with lots of cheese and lots of meat but also some chili like a habanero and stuff like that that works as well and when it goes to the cheese, cheese, uh, not like uh, 
not cheese with mold, please. <laughs> like, not those kind of cheeses, like no blue cheeses or stuff like that. Still, I can't get my head around them. Like, uh, I'm just, when I taste it, I'm like, a, why? Why? What's the meaning of this? Like, uh, we have this beautiful pizza, and then you put something like this in here. It tastes like mold. <laughs> but, like, uh, besides that, one thing I learned even and when I was traveling in Italy was like uh, how much the real tomato sauce or whatever it's called, how much that makes for the good pizza. Like uh, when you have like, uh, well, if you buy like a basic pizza, for example, in Finland, they if they have some kind of, a, I don't know, I think it's even closer to ketchup than <laughs> like a real tomato sauce. And when I tasted like a, one good restaurant pizza at, the, at Rome, not in the center of with the ends of the Trastevere or something like that. It was like a, I think they, sh they it would it it could have been like a just margarita with just with the tomato sauce and still it would it would have been the best pizza I've ever eaten because just because of the tomato sauce there was so much flavor in that already. Yeah, yeah, it's the tomato sauce that is the I think the. Well, a lot of people say that also the water that they used to make the the dough, but oh, I think really? that yeah, I think that tomato sauce is the the one that makes the difference. And uh, I can taste in a lot. Of, there are a lot of pizzerias in Finland that they say yeah, it Italian style pizza, but then there is so much things going on in this tomato sauce that is not working like I would like. So yeah, try again. <laughs> try again. Almost. You are almost there. <laughs> and also, it's not necessarily always has to be an Italian pizza, even though it comes from Italy. But I'm quite open as well for the local pizzerias doing their, or maybe like my mom doing some pizza. It's far oh, from the pizza is good. Yes, it's far from the Italian version of the pizza anymore. But still, it's like a, it's still so good. Maybe yeah. still up to mom as well. <laughs> mom knows how to do. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, good tomato sauce, good cheese, and uh, some meat in there, and I'm I'm all good, and I don't need anything else. Oh, a lots of garlic, lots of garlic. I want to stand so bad after the pizza that nobody wants to be close to me. <laughs> yeah, I know the. Well, you know, the the worst thing is uh, onion, not cook onion, in my opinion. If someone mm -hmm. eats that, then it's like, yeah, <laughs> for, for me, I remember my first boyfriend, he was uh, really in love with uh, onion and yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> but if you, what about if you put fresh onion in it, then it's good? No? Yes? Not for me. Onion just cooked is good for me. I, I don't know like, why. I don't know why. Because red onion, fresh red onion, that's like a really delicious good. And also, also of course, like a garlic onion, that's like, oh. Yeah, with the... garlic, I don't have a problem. I like it. But onion, I, I don't know what's what's wrong with me. <laughs> it's so, It's just it's... my fault. <laughs> Your your Italian grandparents will be like, "Mamma mia, you know." <laughs> yeah, I was always that kind of picky eater, and also when it comes to drinks, I'm a picky drinker. I don't drink everything, so yeah, uh, it's my fault. Well, not maybe a fault. It's just your way of doing things. Not necessarily a negative thing, like you said before. Yeah. yeah. Now it's time. Uh, well, I have a question, important question. Mm -hmm. The the world is dividing to uh, pineapple on pizza and pine and not. What do you think? <laughs> Does it belong on pizza, pineapple? Uh, I don't hate pineapple, but I don't want it on my pizza as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I. Yeah, so you are no no team no pineapple on pizza. No pineapple in my pizza. Like yeah. uh, I could eat the pineapple without the pizza, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm agree. I'm I'm with you on that. Um, now there is the question that the one person, the the previous guest, uh, left you. So mm -hmm. the question is, what do you do to get to know yourself better? 
I that's like a really good question because that's something I have to try. I have been training for as 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 well, like uh, learning to listen to my body, like you spoke before. Uh, that's a that's really like uh, one thing that I need to get better. Maybe not need, but I want to get a little bit better in that because I'm really easily neglecting my own body or neglecting my own mind because I just want to do the stuff. I want to be in there and I want to make it. I want to make things shine. But like uh, one good way of uh, like uh, self therapy for me has been like uh, writing the lyrics because the lyrics always come from somewhere, and uh, the older I have, the, the older I get, the more I after that wrote the lyrics, I read the lyrics and think, Saku, where is this coming from? And I think that's one of the best things I've been doing, like a little bit like a self searching. With the lyrics, yeah. yeah, and also like uh, when we talk about video games or movies or books or anything, like also the thing like uh, when you get so high emotions from something, that's also a good place to ask yourself why, and yeah. not a negative thing. It's more like a, it's more like a grinding with the feeling. It's more like getting more out of it. So it's a good thing, definitely. But also it has helped me to like a really understand why things are happening why my mind is doing the things it does or everything like that yeah okay nice but now it's your turn to leave a question whatever one question that i have been asking for myself again not in a negative way is like why keep going like why give you so much of yourself every every day from day to day from week to week to month to month and i'm pretty sure many artists do the same in their bands or whatever they are doing so my question would be why keep going on this why keep going on with this artist life okay nice one okay let's see what the next will answer but we are at the end of this episode so thank you so much for your time it was really nice thank to have you here as guest uh would you like to say something to people that are watching or listening to this keep going this is going to be a cool ride. This whole life is going to be so cool, right? So keep going. It does. And do good things for yourself and to others as well. True. Important. <laughs> Kitos paljon. Yes. Kitos. <laughs>